The inmate stands close to me. He looks at me with this piercing glance and he tells me about the night of his murdering. I'm just standing there, listening. For a moment it feels as if we're all alone, just him and me. But we are not. Wherever I look, I face an inmate. We're all in the same room. We are having a break from my speech and in a few minutes I will continue. But right now, it's time to drink water or coke and eat chips. Not me. I'm not hungry anymore. They are standing in small groups, chatting. They are watching me, observing me. And some of them are smiling at me. But it's not the smile I know. It's different. I have been given many speeches in my life, but this one is the first one in a state prison. And I remember how I thought, oh, that's going to be special. And yes, it is. Hello, my dear friends out there. My name is Anna and I'm your time expert. Someone who is curious to know what people in different situations think about time. Because that's what I do for business. I find time, I talk about time and I celebrate time. And this time I visited prisoners. I thought I was well prepared for my speech. But today I understand that it's far more disturbing to enter prison for the first time than I thought. So many different feelings were showing up. Fear, compassion, gratitude, discomfort. The entire spectrum of sensations. And I've learned something which doesn't leave my mind anymore. But there is so much more. Did you know that we, the ones who are free, are living an equal punishment as the people in jail do? Which I believe is one of the reasons for unhappiness. Welcome to an exciting episode. The break is over. I have to get back on my stage. Everyone takes place. Silence. Concentrate, Anna. And off I go again. How many times have I looked at this presentation? Plenty of times. How is it possible that for the second time I get into an issue where I suddenly think, no, 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 you can't talk about this here. Anna, change topic now. Topics I usually talk about. But here's not the place to talk about regrets and waste of times. But I do. What a day. A day filled with unusual situations. It started this morning. I'm standing in front of a pile of clothes. Nothing suits me anymore. Okay, come on, next jeans. No, too tight. Next jeans. Still too tight. Suddenly every single pair of trousers seem too tight. I have no idea what to wear. And the prison visit is starting to make me nervous. I'm already feeling how I gently leave my comfort zone. Next jeans. I want to wear an XXL overall where you can't see any body farms at all. Because today I will be facing men which haven't been able to have physical or sexual contact with a woman in ages. No wonder I feel uncomfortable. My speech part is over and we start the open discussion about my mentioned topics. I hear all kind of statements. For us, there is no now. There are just the past and the future, nothing else. The past is the reason why we are here. We have all done something bad and the future, what will it bring? Or, did you think we have like buddies in here? No, not really. We are far away from camaraderie. 
I did understand this when I was standing in the dental surgery room they have in prison. It's used quite often. I must say that in my naive thinking about prison, I had the hope that there was a kind of camaraderie. But with all the research I did on the prisons and what I've learned from the inmates themselves, there is not. You're all by yourself. I read a blog written by an inmate who is in a prison where they have a cell for two people. In the beginning, he was getting really close to his inmate. He told him everything and they became friends. And one day, out of the blue, a guard came and transported his cell buddy to another track. He never saw him again. That's when he understood that he will never know how long he will be with the person in the same cell. They come and then they get replaced. That's how it is. So you start to become a lone wolf. But there is this one guy, I call him the Tony Robbins guy. He has been in prison for already five years, more to come. And he, whatever he said, I was like, what is he doing here? Everything he said was so wise. In the last years, he has been learning fluent German. And right now, he's doing an IT course. You have to improve yourself. You have to look forward and so on. I told him that he should stand here and that he should give motivational speeches. And that's when another guy, I call him the sad one, said, Don't worry. He's the one bringing the food every day and he talks like this every day. That is something that astonished me. The mixture of these guys. Some real heavy guys were there. Believe me, I know what some of them have done. And seriously, you don't want to know. And there were others having done shit things like a robbery or selling drugs. I mean, what a freaking waste of time to be in this prison. A young, good-looking, polite and open-minded guy explained why he did this robbery. Do you know why? Because he wanted to buy time. And that's how he explained it. I put the two possibilities on the plate. Work hard, earn some money until I get 60 years old and then have some fun for the rest of the time. Or I get money fast and I can have a good life right away. You know how he decided? He has a girlfriend out here, waiting for him to get out. How long will she wait? And he, this young, nice, polite guy, just wants to get the prison time over. When we talked about the main question I had, is it possible to create moments in prison? He said... I don't even want to create moments because I don't want ever again to remember this time in here. I want this time to disappear in my mind when I'm out here. He's already been in there for two or three years and he will maybe make another two to three years. This for a so-called small crime. If he has brought a gun with him when he did the robbery or harmed another person, we talk about up to 10 years in prison. Do the kids out here know how life in prison is? No, because nobody knows who hasn't been in there. But I know one thing for sure since this day. A life in prison is far worse than we think. And we need to teach our kids about this and, yes, even explain what prison is. That it is a place where you never ever want to be and that you have to live a life which doesn't even allow a chance to get into prison. If you get in there, you will get out as another person and that is guaranteed. I'm waiting for the train. It's the day after my prison visit. I'm standing next to a kiosk and I see a headline in big orange letters. CEO might get several years in prison for financial fraud. I shiver. 
this man has no idea what is expecting him. How could he? I'm sure he didn't have a bad life. I see all kind of pictures running through my mind. And the last one is how he gets out as a broken man. Back to the prison. In the back row sits an older man, long grey hair, wearing eyeglasses. Doesn't say a word the first 90 minutes, he just listens. But when the young, open-minded, polite guy speaks up, explaining how he doesn't want to remember one single moment from the time in here, I see the elderly guy moving. I can see he's touched, almost concerned. And that is when he starts talking. He explains that you should create moments. Otherwise, time will never pass. He has been in there for a long time, and he had learned that every smallest activity can become a golden moment. A moment which can do you some good. He says, Every cigarette is a pleasure. It's not just inhaling, exhaling. No, I'm in the moment. And it might sound funny, but even brushing my teeth has become a special moment. This makes me think of the last letter I got from David, my pen pal from a state prison in the US. He's on death row, he will never get out, and he will be executed with the lethal injection. He doesn't know when. Let me read you some lines from the letter. Let's talk about creating moments in prison. Prison in itself is a moment within a moment. Creating moments happens in different ways at different camps. We have created moments around food and other things. We created moments when we used to go to the yard together. But sadly, we are trapped in a moment. Trapped in a moment. I mean, this phrase just hit me so hard. Just imagine it, to be trapped in a moment. For a long time, I talked to a guy who will never get out of prison. He's too dangerous for society. He was the one who was kindly offering me any support if I have more questions. He, he will always be trapped in the moment. Liberty, freedom, my dear friend out there, let me be straightforward. Let me provoke a few thoughts. Do you know how free you are? Are you aware that you still have an identity? You are called by your name. You are not number 267489, get over here now. And you are not the property of a state. Sometimes you might think that you are imprisoned in a system, or as I call it, in the tornado of life. Do you really believe that you don't have the choice to get out of this? Oh yes, yes you can. The only thing which makes you think like this is because you lack of courage. Excuse my words, but I've seen women living in an abusive household escape. Do you know how much courage that needs? I have seen people quit their jobs without even having a secure position in the near future. That's freedom. We can do this. Please, my friend, don't be the one who is building the walls around you. Break them. Feel how free you are. This feeling makes you want to fly and scream, doesn't it? I mean, come on, isn't that the most beautiful thing we can experience? I'm thinking about this every single day since, how free I am. I thought I knew, but now I know better. I will never forget when Samuel and I went to bed that night, after our prison visit. After brushing my teeth, thinking of experiencing a moment, I crawled into bed and Samuel's arms. Tears started running down my cheek. 
I felt his skin and it was as if I have never really felt it so intensive. To feel the body warmth. I was so happy to be able to experience proximity. It was the best sensation. And I was so sad because I knew that all these people I had met today haven't had this for a long time and some will never again experience this. Still today it makes me sad. Imagine a life without a human touch, without closeness, without physical contact. I mean, just observe yourself how often you experience physical contact and now imagine you can't have this anymore. Oh, we should be so grateful for every single touch we get. Remember I mentioned that an unhappy person and prisoners have one thing in common? When I understood this, sitting on the train a few days after the prison visit, observing all the people around me, it hit me like a bolt of lightning. Suddenly, I saw the connection. Some of us are living the same punishment as the inmates of a prison. Do you know this feeling that you are unhappy but you don't know why? It feels as if there isn't an obvious reason, but still, you feel somehow frustrated. If this day or this feeling shows up, take a look at your daily life. Could it be possible that you are experiencing monotony? A total lack of variety, sameness all the time? Yes, monotony. This could be the reason for your unhappiness. And if that's the case, remind yourself that you are free to break this. The day in prison, the sad one approached me. Another young guy who has committed a rather small crime and he told me that the worst punishment of it all was the monotony. The monotony almost kills me. These were his exact words get up at the same time every single day, eat at the same times every single day. There is no possibility to change this. And it's not in their hands. But you, you can. There are no guards, no walls around you, forcing you to do the same thing every single day. Change behavior, do something else. Even if you change tiny things, It is a change and I believe it will make you feel better because monotony slowly chews on us from the inside. Next time, if this kind of unhappiness appears, analyze it with this in your mind and let me know how it goes. Let's talk about a moment which made me shiver from head to toe when I was on stage in prison. It was almost in the end of my time with the prisoners when the angry one, who has been shaking his head several times during my speech and was visibly not happy with my input, asked me, Now Anna, after all that, what has been said, I still don't know how to handle this situation. You didn't give me a solution. Tell me, what shall I do? I have no clue what to say. So he gets even more irritated, starts to move on his chair and I can see his anger in his eyes. He goes on, I don't get the point of. And that's when his neighbor turns to him, shuts him up by whispering things in his ear. And another one interrupts saying, there might not be a clear instruction manual here. I think there are several thoughts to think about from this evening. Next week, I will be sending them an instruction manual I have been written in the last days, which is called Possible Ways to Create a Moment in Jail, because I don't want the angry one to be angry with me. My friend, you feel that I haven't told you everything about this prison visit, don't you? 
but don't worry. From time to time you will get more pieces. We, we have just started our shared journey and there will be so much more to come. Thank you for taking part in this adventure, where we are among like-minded people, eager to think about life and time. Let me end this episode with an announcement. I have always considered myself as quite a normal person. Even though I have heard other things and this started already as a kid and has gone on until the present day. And don't get me wrong, it makes me smile whenever someone tells me that I'm a crazy woman. But if it happens twice that I'm called crazy, not just by my friends, but by two inmates of two different state prisons, that's when I indeed question my view on myself. And anyway, what is normal? So I have decided not to pretend to be normal anymore. Let's see where this will take us. For now, take care, feel free, celebrate the fact for being able to choose. Be curious and enjoy the moments you are experiencing. And appreciate every single cuddle or touch you get. I'm back in two weeks with another fantastic topic, but that's a surprise. Now take care. Bye. Honey